everybody. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Stay healthy. you all. Hi, y'all. Miss y'all, too. God bless you. See you soon. Hello, and welcome to Worship with St. Paul's United Methodist Church. I'm Amy Jo Burr, the pastor of St. Paul's, and I welcome you to join our congregation as we pray and praise God together today. Before we begin with our service of worship, I have just a few words of announcement. The annual church conference meeting for St. Paul's United Methodist Church will be held on Monday, February 15th at 7 o'clock p.m. by video conference. Reports will be available prior to the meeting. As we look ahead into our February calendar, Ash Wednesday begins Lent on Wednesday, February 17th. A video worship service for Ash Wednesday will be prepared and it will include making the sign of the cross with ashes. If you would like to pick up your ashes, they will be available near the front door of our church building the week prior to Ash Wednesday. If you live far removed from the church building or, un or are unable to drive to pick those up, please just give the church office a call and we can mail a packet of ashes to you via re regular mail as well. Once we've begun Lent with Ash Wednesday, the following Wednesdays in Lent, we'll have a meeting of our adult Christian education group by video conference. 
This group will be sharing their dreams, hopes, and aspirations together in order to lift one another up. I think this will be a wonderful opportunity for Christian conferencing. And if you have a dream to share, just be in contact with the office and we will send that link out to you so you can join up with that video conference group. And now let us begin our worship service with prayer. Please join me to pray. O oh Lord, our God, you are always more ready to bestow your good gifts on us than we are to seek them and are willing to give more than we desire or deserve. Help us so to seek that we may truly find so to ask that we may joyfully receive, so to knock that the door of your mercy may be opened to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our opening hymn is My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Please join me as we sing together. looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, all that me from this day be scripture reading today is Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Today we are talking about some different devotionals for children and youth and how to use them. So I've brought in a couple of my favorites. Um, for starters, my favorite devotional for children is our Daily Bread for Kids. And it's a devotional we now use at St. Paul's UMC and we actually give out with our Bibles. Um, I love this devotional for kids because they can either look up topics they're interested in the back and turn right to that page to go along with that topic, or else they can turn to the current day of the year and read about that day's topic. 
I can look in the back and look up the topic praise and it'll show me all the dates that talk about the topic of praise. Or else I can look up today's topic, which today's date is January 24th, and we will see the topic is about love and the title for the date is Let It Show. For each date, it gives us a Bible passage, which for today it is 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not want what belongs to others. It does not brag, it is not proud. It also gives you a short paragraph talking about the topic, as well as a fun fact. And it even tells you where in the Bible you can read more about that subject. For youth, I suggest two different things for two different reasons. First, I recommend a good study Bible. Now, of course, this isn't a devotional guide. This is just the study Bible. But uh, in the back of the study Bibles, they have pieces that really help with devotionals. So this is my personal study Bible. I think every teen should have a Bible of their own to read. And my favorite thing about the study Bibles is the topic areas in the back that I was just talking about. It's just like how the children's devotional has them. They can turn to the back and look up things like guilt or pressure or plans of God or peace. And it'll tell them all the places in the Bible that that topic is talked about. The other thing I suggest and really love for teenagers is an app called Unlocked. I love this app because it not only ties in current things that are going on in the world with how we can connect those things with Jesus' teaching and the Word of God, but also because almost every teen has their phone on them at all times and can access this app whenever and wherever they want. When I open this app, it lets me see the topic for the day as well as past topics of the month if I'm curious to look up old months. It should be no surprise to anyone that when I look up January 20th, the main topic is love and politics, which I'm sure has been on the minds of many teens right now, as well as the rest of us. It gives you a couple Bible passages that you can read about the topic, one of which here is Matthew 22, 37 through 40. It also has readings that encourage deeper discussion of each topic, as well as lets you take notes about what you just read, lets them join in a year-long Bible reading plan, um, lets them watch special videos and listen to podcasts that go along with different topics, and shows ways that the teens can share their favorite devotionals via social media, as well as write and submit their own devotional pieces to the app. All around, a very handy and relevant tool for youth to have and use. Our second scripture reading today is from Psalm 119, verses 97 through 105. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn away from your ordinances, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As disciples of Jesus Christ, one of the important practices that helps us to stay close to God is the reading, learning, and remembering of the biblical tradition, of the Bible passages and Bible stories which inspire us and bring us hope. Both of the Bible passages which we read in worship today reflect on the importance of the biblical tradition. The passage from Deuteronomy says this, Keep these words that I'm commanding you today in your heart. 
Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Now God gives us this commandment, not simply to give us another rule to follow. No, God gives us this commandment as a gift because the stories of the Bible can bring us the power and presence of God in our life when we need it. They can bring us hope. Think of a time when you've needed the power and presence of God in your life. Maybe you were feeling weighed down by responsibilities or illness, almost like you were bent over, like the bent over woman, and you remembered her story of healing in the scripture, and it brought you hope. Or maybe you were encountering the pain of grief and you read again the biblical account of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and it brought to you the hope of new life and the power of Christ's resurrection. Perhaps you were simply feeling tired and needed the Bible to remind you that God can raise us up on eagle's wings, or maybe you were feeling timid and needed courage and bravery, and so you thought back to examples like Daniel, who was thrown into the den of lions but who was protected by God's presence and came out safely. There are so many stories in our biblical tradition that bring us hope when we need it, that bring us strength and power and guidance. They're beautiful stories, and I encourage you to take up this commandment today and to keep them close to you. Now, one of the easiest ways to learn study and remember the stories of the biblical tradition are to simply set aside a bit of time each day for a time for searching the scriptures. People often refer to this as a daily devotional time. And I encourage you, if you've never done this practice, January is a month when we often reorder our lives for the year. And I encourage you to try setting aside some time to read a Bible passage, reflect on it, and say a prayer. For many people who are simply uh, just beginning this tradition, they find that having a devotional guide, um, such as we saw Lonnie use with the children and youth today, can really be a helpful thing. And many people who read the Bible every day for years and years continue to use a a devotional guide as a guide with them because it shares another person's thought on the scripture and it becomes like having a conversation with another Christian. And uh, so I want to take a few minutes right now to suggest to you some various types of devotional guides. Um, if you've never used one, they're as simple to use as we saw Lonnie using with the children and youth earlier in the worship service. And um, if you have used one for years, you may want to stick right with it because it's working well. Or perhaps you're going to hear about a new devotional guide right now, which inspires you to want to try something new. So I offer... Um, a few suggestions here. Some of them may be familiar, some of them may be do, new. First of all, I want to commend to you the Upper Room Daily Devotional Guide. When I talk to people in our congregation about what daily devotional guide they like to use, the number one thing that everyone tells me is the Upper Room. Um, the Upper Room is available in regular paper print, in large print. It is available as an app for your smartphone. There is an email subscription list you can get on, or you can check the Upper Room website. All of these are ways that you can receive the Upper Room Daily Devotional Guide. And upperroom.org is the place to go to find out more information about any of that. Now, one of the things I love about the Upper Room is how accessible it is and how, as I said earlier, it kind of feels like a conversation with an, a friend that is someone you haven't met yet. Uh, a new friend, I guess we could say. A new friend who's a Christian. Uh, each, do, each day's devotional guide, uh, a United Methodist from somewhere in the world, shares 
a biblical passage that's meaningful to them, a couple of short paragraphs about why that's meaningful, and a one-sentence prayer to end it. In this, you are blessed with a reading from scripture and also knowing how that has been helpful or made a positive impact in someone else's life. So the upper room is a blessing for all these reasons. Another favorite devotional guide um, that's been around for many years uh, is called Daily Guideposts. And it's kind of a similar format to the upper room. So I mention it right after the upper room. Its founder was Norman Vincent Peale. And he is also the, hour, the author, excuse me, of The Power of Positive Thinking. And so Guideposts has been known throughout the years for having a very positive outlook. Mr. Peel was from the um, Reformed Church tradition, which is another one of the Protestant churches in North America. And uh, so, as I said, it is, very, it is fairly similar to the Upper Room, and it is another favorite. Now, in addition to these general daily devotional guides, which provide Bible passages on a number of topics, you can also find many very specific devotional guides. So you, if you look it up in a bookstore or if you go online to do a search, you can find, for example, uh, daily devotional guides for special interests. There are ones for gardeners and for animal lovers and for many different special interest groups. If that interests you, um, having very specific devotional readings, those are available to you. There are also very specific devotional guides that are available that are focused on areas of spiritual growth. So if, for example, you are in recovery from addiction and you want a devotional guide written just for spiritual growth related to recovery, there's a devotional guide out there just for you. There, similarly, there are things out there if, for example, you're focusing on forgiveness or other areas of discipleship. Just as I said, do a search or look into it through a bookstore or contact your pastor, I'll be happy to help you. So there are both general and specific devotional guides. All of them can be a way that you can be blessed by learning and knowing and searching God's word. Now I mentioned that the Upper Room Daily Devotional Guide was written by ordinary United Methodists from around the world. Now, for some people who are reading a daily devotional guide, they also want a very strong research background. Now, if you are someone who is wanting to really dive into the historical context and uh, translational meaning behind the biblical passages, the Upper Room has a daily devotional guide written just for you. It is called The Disciplines, and it is written by a, a whole team of biblical scholars who have studied and studied God's Word and who bring a great deal of knowledgeable background to their writing. I have used the disciplines before and found it very inspiring and it's opened a lot of new doors to me. Things that I wouldn't have thought of before as they really do a deep dive into God's word and all of the different possible ways that it can be meaningful and helpful to us in our Christian walk. And then I want to pause and say uh, for lovers of poetry, another possibility as a devotional guide might be something that's structured a little bit different than the devotional guides we've been discussing. All the devotional guides we've been discussing follow a very similar format of a short biblical passage, commentary on the passage, and a short prayer. But there is something which focuses on the poetry of the Bible and praying those prayers in the poetry in the Bible, which is called the breviary. And the breviary is patterned after the way that monks chanted daily devotions in monasteries. It is another 
type of devotional guide, which I've used before and found inspiration from. So think back to your days in school. And if, while everyone else was reading a novel, you were running off to read a collection of poetry, the breviary might be for you. Uh, finally, I want to wind up by saying Lonnie did a great job of talking with our older children and youth about devotional guides for children and youth that they could use themselves. If you're looking for a read aloud devotional guide for you to read to children, those are available too. There are many, many. I know uh, a favorite that I've used before is from Veggie Tales, and Veggie Tales has a whole selection of various devotional guides for young children. In conclusion today, I want to say that you do not need a degree in biblical studies in order to be able to read and appreciate the stories of liberating hope in God's word. So I encourage you today to take aside some time to dive into God's word, to read the stories, to learn the stories, and to remember the stories. They will bring you uplift and hope. Amen. Please join me in singing our prayer song, Thy Word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, I think I've lost my way. Still, you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be with me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now I will not forget your love for me and yet my heart is ever wandering. Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side, and I will love you to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Please join me in prayer. God of wisdom, we thank you for the gift of the Bible, which was written for our learning and inspiration. Help us to hear its stories, study its words, and be transformed by its teachings. Make the stories of Christ come alive in our hearts and shape our lives today so that we may hold fast to the hope of new life and resurrection. Amen. Let us continue in prayer, praying together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me as we sing our final hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Sleeping 
thy presence, my light. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou and thou only, first in my heart. Great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. Great God of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. And now let us go with God's blessing. May the blessing of God, fountain of living water, flow within us as a river of life. May we drink deep of her wisdom. May we never thirst again. May we go through life refreshing many as a sign of healing for all through the one who is life eternal. Amen. Mm -hmm.